Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, October 11, 2024. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. The early recovery project carried out by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CEDEMA, and Canada following the eruption of Lassofre Volcano in 2021 has been successfully completed. The project, which amounted to 1 million Eastern Caribbean dollars, targeted education, agriculture, and gender equality programs. Speaking at a closing ceremony today at the Beach Cromers Hotel, a program officer with the Economic Planning Division said that one of the key areas of focus was ensuring adequate water shortage in the event of a disaster. It is safe to say that this project has met these objectives. Under the agriculture component, there were two sub-projects that were executed to meet its objectives. The first, the repair of a thousand linear feet of fencing at the Orange Hill Agriculture Station, and the second, the construction of two water tanks, one at Belmont, North Leeward, and the other at Orange Hill Biotechnology, Biotechnology Center, North Windward. AP Construction completed the installation of the fencing with a contract price of just about 118,000 dollars and a duration of four months, while Braxa ex executed the works for the construction of the water tanks with a budget of just about 150,000 dollars. Initially, the water tanks were supposed to be constructed using the ferro cement technique. However, due to several constraints regarding labor and technical know-how, the decision was made to construct rectangular concrete tanks. Today, the tanks are complete with a holding capacity of 20,000 gallons each. Another component of the project involved the repair of six schools located in the red zone of the volcano in North Windward and North Leeward. Deputy Executive Director of Sedema, Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig, noted that the critical upgrades provided safer spaces for communities. This also includes the improvement of six schools that were repaired under the project to enhance the level of comfort of students, but the schools would also use and can also be used to shelter person displaced as a result of events. It also includes the restoration of safe spaces and it will provide important services for persons who need support based on gender-based violence incidents. And what we recognize that this type of incidents usually increase significantly during emergency events and disasters. The work that we do as an agency and what we, the support that we provide to our participating states um, to build resilience would be impossible without, without the partners that we have, such as Global Affairs Canada. And Global Affairs Canada has been a, a very supportive and understanding partner that ensures that we provide that they provide support which are really in line with the needs and priorities of the country and the region. And I think that's very critical. The Caribbean Early Recovery Fund, funded by Global Affairs Canada and implemented by CEDEMA, aims to support long-term recovery efforts. Head of Cooperation for the Eastern Caribbean at the High Commission of Canada to Barbados and the OECS, Abichi Asafar, stated that the long-term goal is to ensure communities rebuild, recover after a disaster and restore livelihoods, as was the case with St. Vincent and the Grenadines. At that time then, and in large part due to this review, Canada decided to pledge $100 million to support resilience building in the region. And this $100 million included $8 million for an initiative with SEDEMA that's called Targeted Support to SEDEMA, with the aim to strengthen SEDEMA and its regional response mechanism. And within that project, that's where we included the SURF uh, project to be able to help with early and quick recovery. But I want to, and, and Lieutenant uh, Craig mentioned it already, uh, the support to CEDEMA goes beyond the surf uh, that we are celebrating and that we're closing today. The targeted support project also has provided assistance directly to St. Vincent and the Grenadine in other ways. It has supported key members of staff, and I'm sure you all remember Captain Robert Harewood. SVG's Minister of Education, Curtis King, thanks Lima and Canada for coming to the aid of the island in its most vulnerable time. The minister expressed particular gratitude for the rebuilding of schools which continue to serve as shelters during disasters. Assistance to education 
has been transformative. It was mentioned that six schools were rehabilitated, as well as a technical institute. Of these seven facilities, six of them are located in what I keep referring to as the volcano zone. That is to say, in the areas close to the volcano zone. That is critical because not only was the support used to rehabilitate these facilities for the use of our children, but very importantly also is the fact that every year these facilities are numbered among the shelters, what we call the hurricane shelters. It was noted that the concrete water tanks and the schools that were repaired proved to be highly useful during the passage of Hurricane Barrel, offering great help to the affected communities. And more than 20 new products have been introduced to farmers here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines by Agriculture in Integrated Solutions and Services, Agress. Agress is one of the companies showcasing products at the Caribbean Week of Agriculture Trade and Expo held at the cruise ship berth in the capital Kingstown. The agent for Agress, a company based in Trinidad and Tobago, is a former chief agriculture officer of SVG, Ruben Robertson. He said the products are designed to help farmers withstand various weather conditions. But what I want to show you is that we're talking about climate change. And when the, 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 the plants, um, you know, the heavy rains beat down the plants and they flood, we want to bring them back. This is a miracle product called Bioforge. It um, activates the root tips and the, the you know, to allow the, the, the plant to, to regenerate. And this is a savior for the farmers. We also have what we call the green miracle. You know, when the sun is hot and the heat, so, so we go into the shade or we use umbrella. This in itself allows the plant to hold the water by creating a shield. You know, green miracle. So the farmers have to worry no more about heat stress and floods and what have you. We work along with farmers, we use the product, and they see the difference so that they are encouraged. So for example, we have some new products that we are introducing. This one is called Humiplex. And Humiplex allows the farmer to mix this with its, with its organic matter, pen manure and so on. It opens up the soil to allow for more greater absorption of the roots and allow the plant to, to increase its uptake. Agress is partnering with Mafas Limited, another company from Trinidad and Tobago, to bring these new products into St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Marcus Michael, Managing Director of Mafas Limited, was one of the presenters at the CWA session. He emphasized the need for more farmers to use environmentally friendly products on their farms. Introduce new technologies. Um, Biowatch, if you could say, could actually bring you back from a far place. I don't want to say from the dead, but... So there are technologies and Mr. Robinson is now the focal point that we hope that the farmers will get the information, use the technologies, increase yields, uh, safer technologies. A lot of what he talked about in Embersiden is, is neem-based technology. There's a whole range of microbial or safer organic um, crop protection products that he has introduced and as well it's actually the direction that the entire region, all the crop protection people and the Ica and Cardi and so on, they are, they are very much encouraged by what Mr. Robinson is doing here. This is the future. We apologize for bringing you the wrong insert. Helen's Daughters, a non-profit organization in St. Lucia, is encouraging more women, especially those in rural communities, to get involved in agriculture. Member of Helen's Daughters, Angelina Augustine, participated in the Caribbean Week of Agriculture, Trade and Expo, where they display a range of products made by women. The organization is now looking to expand its market to St. Vincent and the Grenadines.
And it really is to empower women in agriculture to drive for sustainable development and to get women to become more resilient in combating the issues with changing climate and, and, and um, handling of their families. You know, women are multitasking and they have a responsibility. And we know that if women are involved in any area, like right now they are involved in, in agriculture, once women are involved, everybody's going to be fed because of their passion and their whole emotion about women. Become more empowered and encourage their children to get involved in agriculture. It's a, ensuring a way of sustaining food and re reducing our input bill, bills because a lot of the food can be produced in Ireland. Some of the products showcased include jams and jellies made from local fruits as well as other items produced by female farmers me today I have three product lines, four of them do. The cayenne pepper jelly, nutmeg jam, it can be used as a spread on pancakes for children and um, dried mangoes, dehydrated mangoes which has nothing else added but just mango and flour. I have breadfruit flour today, banana flour, macabo flour and planted flour. Flour is a way of sustaining with all the challenges of the weather of sustaining the products to ensure that there is food for life. Yeah, if persons here we hope to attract um, entrepreneurs who are willing to purchase and sell the products because agents for our products in St. Vincent and the Greater Peace. I would also like you to take one. Caribbean Week of Agriculture 2024 concluded today with a cultural showcase at the cruise ship Burt. As St. Vincent and the Grenadines continues its transformation in the tourism industry, Minister of Tourism Carlos James is encouraging every Vincentian to embrace the developments taking place. He made this, these remarks while addressing the welcome ceremony for the inaugural JetBlue flight, which will offer direct flights from JFK New York to SVG on Wednesdays and Sundays. Let us continue to be the best ambassadors that we can be. Because every opportunity we get to sell our country, to provide a service, to visit us and to welcome them and to make them feel at home is a tick and a plus to our destination. Because the conversation out there is about this emerging destination called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Everyone within the tourism and sales services sector, they are talking about this new destination, this emerging destination. Our role is simply to be our best selves, to show them our creativity, our warmth and hospitality, and our natural Vincentian love, which we share everywhere we go as proud Vincentians. That's what we do. And the, it's a testament, the staff who came in on the JetBlue flight, they will tell you how, how proud they are, how immensely proud they are as Vincentians. And when they talk to their colleagues about St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we owe it to this country to express our pride and gratitude in what we do. David Chen, Vice President of Network Planning and Airline Partnerships at JetBlue, expressed their excitement to add St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the growing list of Caribbean destinations where JetBlue provides airlift services. Um, it's incredible to think that JetBlue in just 24 years has grown from a small airline to one that serves over 100 cities across the United States, the Caribbean, Latin America, Canada, Europe, and today our 26th country in Latin America, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. With this launch, JetBlue becomes the first U.S. carrier to provide nonstop service between JFK and, and Argyle International Airport in St. Vincent. Today we had, uh, introduce JetBlue's award-winning service, our low fares, our, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> oh, and the better option for customers to serving St. Vincent. Uh, adding new routes like this provides opportunities for our customers to, to come to St. Vincent for leisure or to visit friends and family, and is a very important part of our future success. We're one of the largest carriers in the Northeast. We have an incredible customer base, and we always want to introduce new options to our customers.
We want to fly where our customers want to fly, and that's why we're here today in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who also spoke at the ceremony, expressed his satisfaction with JetBlue's entry into St. Vincent and Grenadines, noting that the airline's presence will increase competition, ultimately benefiting travelers. What is happening in our country today is exciting, and we are happy that you have a part to play in it. We are grateful for your presence. At the same time, we know that you are not a charitable institution, that you have to make money. That is also the American way. But you make some, and we make some. All of us happy going forward to the bank. More jobs, more services, more hotel rooms, etc., etc. Long may we have this partnership. And you can rely on me always to be very supportive of you and all the airlines that come here. Because without the airlines, this investment will be nothing. Without the airlines, the paradigm shift in the economy would create difficulties and we'll have to go back to the drawing board to amend certain things. Of course, as we go along, we will have to have alterations. But I think we are all on the right path. The opposition New Democratic Party, NDP, is set to unveil its plans and introduce two of its new candidates this weekend at its annual convention in North Leeward. Leader of the NDP, Dr. Godwin Friday, said much can be expected from the candidates during the four-hour convention, which will be held in Pitibadel. We are having the second leg of the NDP convention, 2024 convention. Uh, last Sunday, we had a um, first one, which is a closed session. This one in Peter Bodell is open to everybody, and we're inviting everyone to come down. We're going to have uh, speeches and some entertainment and so forth, but of course, we are going to focus on the launch of our two Leeward candidates, or two new Leeward candidates, that is to say, Mr. Conroy Huggins, who is the candidate for Central Leeward, and Dr. Kishore Shallow, who is our candidate for North Leeward, and it starts at 11 o'clock. Uh, we aim to wrap up around 4 o'clock, and uh, it would be a wonderful occasion. Everybody's invited to be there. And after that, we're going to go and watch Vince Eat win the football game out at Annasville playing field. So it's going to be a wonderful day. I'm looking forward to it. The NDP has not yet finalized its candidates or some of the other constituencies. <laughs> Here at the annual Pink Cap City Walk and Rally was held in capital Kingston today as part of activities for Breast Cancer Awareness Month 2024. The event was hosted by the SVG Medical Association under the 2024 team. No one should face breast cancer alone. According to the World Health Organization, this team emphasizes the critical role of patient-centered care, which includes medical, emotional, psychological and social support through patient navigation systems. It also aims to address gender and socioeconomic inequalities in access to breast cancer care. Speaking on the topic on the radio, uh, co coping with breast cancer, psychologist Dr. Joselle Miller stressed the importance of understanding the psychological challenges people may face after being diagnosed with breast cancer. Dr. Miller pointed out that while breast cancer is often associated with females, males can also develop the disease. She explained that being told you have breast cancer can be emotionally overwhelming, leading to anxiety, fear and depression all common psychological challenges faced by patients. Usually one of the first things that the person experience is emotional distress. To the extent that even in that very moment where the doctor is trying to speak to you about what they have found and you know what the next steps may be, most patients at that time zone out. 
-hmm. because so we see anxiety we see fear we see depression developing as well where they have feelings of sadness and hopelessness and despair and the despair especially comes where persons feel that they're going through this by themselves mm -hmm. some persons actually choose to do it by themselves because they are afraid to even share the information with others and persons will say but why why not tell your family member why not tell your friends right. because for some persons the reality becomes too much Dr. Miller emphasized that upon diagnosis, the spouse or partner of the, patient, of the patient should be included in the conversation. This inclusion is vital as it helps them provide a necessary emotional support during a challenging time. Unfortunately, we have seen cases where um, after a diagnosis, some husbands, boyfriends, partners decide that, okay, this is too much for me, and they leave, or if they say that there is no physical... Um, attraction anymore so persons just feel like we have become units so to speak but it's important for the partners to get on board and to understand that their support is crucial at this time and whatever is done in that moment can make or break the situation Breast Cancer Awareness Month is an annual international campaign observed every October to raise awareness about breast cancer, encourage early detection, support those affected, and fund research into its causes, prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and cure. The Public Sector Reform Unit and the Ministry of Health are preparing to host the annual Glow Walk scheduled for October 26, 2024 in capital Kingstown. Deputy Director of the Unit, Emma Jackson, stated that the Glow Walk is part of the activities to celebrate Public Service Week and coincides with the National Independence Celebrations. And Jackson is inviting the entire Vincentian public to participate in the Glow Walk, which she describes as fun and engaging. Youngest walker, male and female, most patriotically dressed walker, male and female, the best patriotically dressed couple, couple, definition of couple, two people, male and male, female and female, female and male. So you register who your partner will be if you're going into that particular competition. There's a mini burnout competition, and that also is for the male and female. You also have largest crew. So again, you go out to your ministry's department, encourage your colleagues to come out, of course to be fit, but there are some um, tokens for the largest crew. We have divided that into two groups. You have the ministry slash autonomous departments, and then you have the general public in terms of whether they form themselves into a group. Some already have organizations. And in the 72 hours weather forecast now, we hear that the SVG, well, the SVG Med Services says fair to occasionally cloudy skies will persist across uh, the island the remainder of today with intermittent isolated showers approaching moisture could result in an increase in cloud cover on Saturday. The forecast says the chance of showers increases from Sunday as a tropical wave approaches our islands. This wave is cells coupled with support from the upper levels will continue to affect our islands islands on Monday. Residents are asked to remain on the alert. The 72 hours weather forecast further noted that moderate to fresh east southeasterly to easterly trades will cross our islands during the forecast period. Sea conditions moderate with swells peaking to 1.5 on the western coast and near 2.0 meters on the eastern coast. It says small craft operators and sea baiters to exercise caution. The Saharian dust haze concentrations of varying intensities will continue to cross our islands, reducing air quality and visibility. 